very good morning and welcome to the Capital Breakfast Show on this amazing Wednesday morning. As you know, we are in the middle of the week and I am your host, Sia Bonga Klele, and sitting next to me is the beautiful and gorgeous Robin Jones. Good morning, Sia. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. I'd like to welcome our viewers on this lovely hump day. It's definitely midweek and we have an awesome lineup for you. But stay tuned and we'll be right back. <laughs> You are still tuned into the Capital Breakfast Show where we give you infotainment at its peak. Today on our lineup is very interesting because we've got a bit of a twist up to it. I mean, oh, yes. we've got we it's a fashion week where oh, we up. bring yes. up some of our great designers and showcase what we've got here in I'm South sure Africa. You, just, you can't wait for that part, can I you? absolutely cannot wait. <laughs> the first segment is fitness definitely and I say fashion week but you know that's not all we have <laughs> that's not all we have we are also going to be looking at how well do you know Africa and we'll be topping off our show with some poetry but to kickstart our morning hope everyone at home is well dressed and ready to kickstart their morning with fitness enjoy <laughs> Three, 
That was fitness and I have to say I'm loving it day by day it's went from legs to arms and now we've been dealing with some of uh, some of our traps and everything as you can see I'm unbuttoned because I was just working it out here myself eh? unfortunately I don't sweat that quickly but as you know we have to go on to how to dress well with SA fashion week I hope you do enjoy our following segments on fashion of course
And that was SA Fashion Week where we can actually take a very good look and see that our SA designers can actually match up or come very close to international standards. Definitely, I mean, I am crazy about fashion and what I saw on the ramps there was just absolutely amazing. <laughs> Talking about South Africa, moving on along, we'll be going to How Well Do You Know Africa? This is How Well Do You Know Africa and next to me I have a, I won't just say a dancer, but a girl who's an old rather in the entertainment industry. Her name is Buntle. Hello. AKA Sexy Mama. Well then I can do that, I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take Sexy Mama. I just talked to her now, she doesn't know everything about it, so I want to put her on the spot. But before I put you on the spot, what do you love about Africa? How well do you know Africa? Um, not too well, not as well as I'd love to know it, you know. Um, I know the textbook version of Africa, you know. I know what I've been told, what I've seen on television, what I've heard. <laughs> but I don't know it as well as I'd, I'd love to, you know. In terms of soccer, yo! Oh my gosh, I'm trying, I'm learning, baby steps. I'm like, talking about Africa, because she doesn't know anything except the things that they taught on the book. What is your favorite dish in Africa except South Africa? My favorite dish? Yo! <clears throat> Masonja? I've never had masonja. You've never had masonja? No. Have you had, there's a Nigeri Nigerian dish, as rice. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing egusi. I don't even know what egusi. Egusi! I don't know, I don't know about egusi. Um, but where I stay, I know a lot of people have egusi, so it's my only reference of like Nigerian. <laughs> Talking about sports, can you mention, not say 10 because she doesn't know anything about soccer, not to flex on her because I'm a sport presenter, but then mention five soccer players in Africa that you adore. Drogba, um, the Balotelli brothers, you saw Drogba. Oh, but I mean, no, 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 I think the Balotelli brothers are winning over Drogba, I think for very obvious reasons. <laughs> um, Eto. And that's as far as it goes for me. Sorry for the rest of the African brothers, but you know, that's it. <laughs> Dancer, please show me one dance move from Africa. Please give me this okay. so that I can, I wanna dance also. How do I put this? Show me one dance in South Africa. Okay, so I want you to... Africa, my name is Maya. <laughs> and that was Maya with Bundle up in Soweto with some famous South African dancers. They definitely know how to move. Well, they can definitely move, and it's a good thing they're female because, uh, from my kind of uh, dance movements, I couldn't really match up to what they were able to do over there because mm. I'm a guy and dancing, well, it doesn't <laughs> really settle well with me. No, trust me, it takes practice. I'll it do takes my practice. Best. I'll do my best. All right, well, from dancing and how well do you know Africa to poetry, but just before we actually get to that, Robin, real quick, give me the five letters of the alphabet, the last five. The last five? Yes. Okay, on uh. that note, we still have letters. <laughs> we'll be moving on to poetry. Do enjoy our following segment. He sits to me like a tired old warrior contemplating his youth. Of battles lost and won and of his search for truth. Imagining myself as him and traveling back in time to see America in technicolored black and white. When Ku Klux Klan burned crosses in the night and response to all black demands were mute and southern magnolias bore dead castrated peculiar fruit. When Jim Crow signs showed us our water fountains and before Martin Luther climbed his mountains. To all of this and countless more walk this old man who sits next door. With skin so full of melanin the south must have been rough for him. He must have swallowed all his pride to take America in stride and still be here at 86. In spite of all the stones and sticks they used to try to break all bones and Hoover's taps on Huey's phones and all the blood that's spilling run from US manufactured guns and all the lying presidents. And all the times they raised the rent and all the blacks to war they sent to die for them. And all the sellout black leaders who lie for them. 
To all of this, this old man walked and still to sit and hear him talk, his strength remains, his pride remains, his love remains, his stride, it remains. He died this year, but I will not forget, and I haven't forgotten you, mother dear. The wailing of your cries that lived within my ears. I haven't forgotten the way they held you down upon the ground so each could have a turn, ripping your dress, stealing your pureness. I haven't forgotten the way it felt to only have your child for a while and fear the auctioneer, becoming human steer. I remember your womanhood. You could pick 50 satchels of cotton I haven't forgotten. You could face the whip, three months within a ship, founding fathers invading hips, stealing your sons and daughters away today, tomorrow, African names become Smith, and black people seem to love it and are willing to sit and watch them colonize you, imperialize you, globalize you, and Tarzan movie trivialize you. But the warmness of your tropical womb I still remember, sucking raw melanin from your breasts, Mount Kilimanjaro's peaks, my cheekbones, black skin, nose and lips survived the ships and whips and founding fathers invading hips. So they see both of your faces today too. I'll make them remember what they did to you. That piece was called Ancestors. It's for all of our ancestors. Yesterday a tree spoke to me in Mississippi. She beckoned me to her softly, wanting no one to hear horrid tales of bearing strange fruit. Her truth? She always tried to hide behind the other trees by pulling in the limbs and leaves when they came, but that never made them leave her alone. Instead, she'd moan as they dragged another screaming body to her trunk. Bending over, she showed me the limb they would choose to hang the noose and cry the sticky sap as she placed the tortured limb into my lap so I could see the gash left in her skin from being abused again and again to kill black men. And sticky sap dipped on my face as she recalled the horrifying screams that haunted her dreams at night and how the victims fought a choking rope, choking hope away with hate, suffocating future dreams, asphyxiating life away with tarred and feathered flames and sticky sap dipped all over me as she recalled the smell of chewing tobacco and gasoline and fear and hatred and burning flesh and laughter, mocking laughter, indifferent, inhuman laughter that floated up to her upper limbs, blocking them from the sun, causing her leaves to wither and fall to the ground where her roots moaned in guilty agony because she felt guilty. Guilty for being an accomplice to murder and torture and now, well now, sticky sap poured from every pore of that tree onto me and I had to hug that tree so she could see that their hate was never hers in my eyes. I never blamed you for the hate of savages who used your limbs to perpetrate their cowardice. I never blamed you. We never blamed you. They never blamed you, those brothers and sisters who swung from your limbs. So don't cry, my sister tree. We know the, sheer, the fear and share the agony of not knowing when or how to run from this American hate. That piece was called Trees. It was way down in the nights. Some youths were under a street light. Wearing the latest in fashion, and they were all chilling out a lot. Then all of a sudden, a shot bang out. You could not hear them a shout. Whoa, blackout, 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 blackout in the ghettos. Oh, yes. Blackout, 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 blackout in the ghettos. Oh, yes. Rules and regulations. Jim Crow and segregation. Token elevation. Redundant. Situation, police infiltration, designer label exploitation of adolescent population, outdated regurgitation that lacks the stimulation to educate a nation within this urban state. Scared police decide our fate. Uncle Sam designates our Black History Day. So for one whole month, like good Negroes, we will sit and discuss their hate. And when we say justice, they say wait. When we cry justice, they say wait. When we scream justice, they still say kefa, wait. Or you could always look into this gate while you wait within your urban state, falling into metaphors of who we are supposed to be and what we are supposed to be, urban youth. Of course you fit the description. Didn't you see the inscription above the door? It says South African Courthouse 1804. That means the Constitution supports this institution so you know the foregone conclusion. Jail, Kefa, jail, $50,000 bail, ghetto youth, where is your mommy going to find that kind of loot? Didn't that court-appointed attorney tell you the truth? You fit the description. I fit the description. We fit the description. The description that says, white lady, hold your pocketbook closer to your breast. And then police will only aim for the head and chest and he'll say, well, he was dark. It was dark. 
There wasn't much light and though the hate impaired my sight, I thought he might. So I shot him. And still, some are sell drugs and some are bust guns and some are run till them tumble down. Blackout, 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 blackout in the ghettos. Oh yes. Blackout, 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 blackout in the ghettos. Oh yes. Blackout, blackout. 41 times. Point for Amadou Diallo, police brutality. It takes 41 bullets to quiet your fears. 41 times for your goosebump pierce. 41 times I grew in your eyes. 41 times to shrink me to size. 41 times you thought you saw a gun. 41 times I didn't try to run. And 41 times, and this government still will say 41 times a grand jury should lead the way. 41 times you still get paid leave, 41 times my mother will have to grieve, 41 spheres of your white fear you hurled at me, 41 times my black skin was all you could see, 41 times to make you feel calm, 41 times and I was never armed, 41 times for this racial schism to grow still more, 41 times more black blood spilled out on the floor. So yesterday, yesterday I ordered three bulletproof vests. See, I have three boys to pass their tests. That's three boys with melanin in their skin, so I'm teaching them about reaching for anything around the waist because I know you won't waste no time stealing their lies from me. I'm letting them know how to turn around, real slow, so you can know it's not the gun you see and send them home alive to me. I'm teaching them how to duck in case you try their luck. Duck boy, duck, duck and roll, duck roll and run some more. I won't let them outside the door of my eyes view. I pray to be with them when they run into you. I'm jumping out of bed with visions in my head of dead phone calls and standing in dark halls at the morgue with one million mothers crying, dressed in their best black dress, wishing they'd ordered my bulletproof vest, overprotective and paranoid too, but all I can do is all I can do to keep my three sons safe from you. I'll make them allergic to policeman blue. What else can I do when I have three Amadous? 9-11. I wonder if I'll be ostracized and criticized by all you Americans listening if I say the chickens have come home to roost. As you throw up your bloody hands lamenting, why me? What have I done? And now, well, now your city streets look like downtown Vietnam and Beirut and the Congo, and Palestine, and Burundi, and Grenada, and Panama, and Baghdad, and you throwing up your bloody hands, lamenting of your plight of domestic flights, flying into famous landmarks, destroying famous skylines, destroyed. Destroyed like the hope of the people in the Congo when you replaced Lumumba with Mobutu, destroyed. Like the hopes of the people in Chile when you replaced Allende with Pinochet, destroyed. Like the hopes of the people in Jamaica when you replaced Manly with Siaga, destroyed. Like the hopes of the people in America when you replaced Malik with Jesse, destroyed. Like Soweto and Biko, destroyed. Like Kenya and Joe destroyed like your national security as innocent Americans die wondering why they're not safe anymore but see reciprocity comes boomeranging back bringing with it the smell of death from Vietnam and Iraq and Nagasaki and repercussions for your years and your years of hegemony as the memory of Japanese kamikaze shining like Pearl Harbor's hijack American invincibility hijack American security hijack American superiority to be spun into yellow journalism accusations and speculations about who done it and the chickens have come home to roost and now all you want to do is throw up your bloody hands and they're bloody up to your wrists, up to your elbows, up to your armpits, up to your shoulders, up to your necks, up to the level of vengeance sometimes and innocent people die sometimes like 100 dying in 100 days in Rwanda while you all change your channels to congressional executive decisions to replace and assassinate third world heads of state trying to decide our own fate as African Americans wrap themselves in the flag, born again patriots who forget that same flag flew over Jefferson Monticello while he capitalized on captured African lives, creating American capitalism, the center of your foreign policy. And I see you watching me in my bed, scared. Could I be Osama coming home with my chickens on this plane filled with drama? And that was Yabba here at our studios. And I have to say, he hasn't slept for four days. That I is crazy. I found it astounding how he manages to I do mean, it. He's multi-talented, but he, he do need some rest. I mean, that's 
unreal from my perspective. I agree with you, but when the question was asked, how does he manage to balance all his talents? Because mm, oh, I yes. mean, he's a writer, he's a teacher, he's a poet. Yes. I mean, he said then he said it, it's not a job, it's his passion, it comes natural to him, so which I understand why he hasn't slept in five days. I guess I need to find my anchor when it comes to that, because I mean, if that doesn't feel like a job for him, I yeah. need to make what I do in my daily life not feel Definitely. like a job as well. But, well, we have come to that part of our show where we have to love and leave you. But don't forget, we'll be back here same time, same place, bright and early tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Just in case you'd like to get into contact with us, you can simply like our Facebook page or you can drop us a few characters on our Twitter handle at TCB Twine. But that's not all. That's right, you can simply send us an email at tcb at We're looking forward to hearing from you back home. See you tomorrow. Have a nice day. Goodbye.